I have often been on this funny round trip from Premiere for editing and then Resolve for color grading and then back into Premiere and then I stopped depressing. But then Resolve 16 came out and since then I'm like, that's it. I don't need Premiere anymore. I'm not coming back. So what's the matter with Premiere? Well, it is a very good software, like all of the Adobe products. Um, it's just that at some point I was starting to have performance issues and I was using Resolve more and more for things like um, noise reduction, color grading, uh, skin tones, low lights, and to make the most out of uh, Blackmagic Pro. And in its latest updates, uh, what I found is that its video editing and audio capabilities are really starting to outperform Premiere. So this is why I really wanted to show you as best as I can the seven things that I like better in Resolve. And then I'll talk about its limitations from the perspective of a former Premiere Pro user. The most important thing that changes the game is performance. So maybe it's just me, but what I found after 10 years of intensive editing was that update after update, um, Premiere seemed to be getting worse over time. Um, I've had crashes, I've had slowdowns, I've had blue screen of deaths, um, audio, playback performance. Actually, Premiere Pro is still mostly CPU based. Uh, while Resolve balances the load between the CPU and the GPU very nicely. Uh, you can easily feel the gain in performance when you load clips or when you scrub through your footage or your audio. I also measured the rendering time on each software with a 2 minute Ultra HD H.264 render. Uh, without any effect applied, Resolve is just a little faster, but as soon as I apply sharpening, you can see that Resolve outperforms Premiere completely. The Lumetri module of Premiere is a very good tool for most of the work, but I do feel that Premiere is actually quite limited when it comes to noise reduction, sharpening, low light, skin tones, or regional color grading in general. And yes, you could buy third-party plugins, but I found that they slow down performance even more. On the opposite, Resolve was a Hollywood level color grading software before becoming an editing software, so its image processing capabilities are huge and I've experienced that myself. The color selector is very accurate, it allows great flexibility to the point where you can even do some green screen work directly into Resolve. There's also this advanced uh, camera shake effect which I like a lot to simulate shoulder movement along with pretty much all Premiere's effects equivalent in Resolve Studio as well as the same kind of keyframeable uh, property inspector. Finally, there is a very, very tight integration of the new Blackmagic Row format which for me is a very promising codec. In the latest versions of Resolve, uh, a lot of care has been put into audio. Um, I'm not an audio guy, but I think it sits in between Premiere and Audition. Uh, there are things that I really liked, such as the real-time waveform resize when you adjust volume, uh, easy crossfade, fast scrubbing performance, and audio hardware management. Maybe it's just my stupidity, but in Premiere, switching between headphones, a speakers, sound cards on Windows was a nightmare. <laughs> in Resolve, if I just want to change the audio output, I go in the taskbar here and then I press this and then boom, I'm done. And of course, you can find all of Premiere's audio effects, which I think have a much better user interface in general. So overall, it's much better designed in Resolve. 
One of the features not many people talk about is the cut detection. And I really like this one. Uh, say you want to use bits of an existing trailer. Well, you can just import the whole trailer and it will actually detect all the cuts for you and import them as separate clips so that you don't have to go through the tedious process of recutting each cut. Resolve 16 came with a new cut page which allows you to see a complete and a zoomed in timeline at the same time, along with other practical shortcuts. Recently, I had this project where I had literally thousands of video to go through and with this page, I can tell you that I was going very fast. I also think the overall interface layout is much more clean and logical than the Premiere Pro interface and with time, I must say it adapts very well to a variety of configurations, whether you're on a single laptop or multiple displays. You might already have this slow motion Premiere plugin, which is called Twixtor and which allows you to do slow motion even if you didn't shoot at a high frame rate. Well, Resolve has its own kind of equivalent built into the software. It's called Optical Flow and it's actually much easier to use and much, much more intuitive since the speed curves can be edited directly into the timeline. I think this is really powerful. Syncing stuff. Uh, in general, is much easier in Resolve than in Premiere. Uh, there's a much better view on the waveforms and Resolve has the ability to convert audio timecode to file timecode. Also, I've worked on many multicam projects, uh, both on Resolve and on Premiere, and I do think that the multicam editing on Resolve has now reached the power of Premiere. Um, and actually, I'm working on a video on how to uh, sync multiple cameras using Resolve, so stay tuned for that. Resolve Studio comes at $299. Uh, there's also a free version with no limitations, but with less features. Until now, there was no upgrade cost for going from one version to a newer version. Also, when you buy a Blackmagic camera, you get a complete studio license for two devices. So since I bought an Osa Mini Pro and a Pocket, I got four studio licenses in total. So I do think the pricing is highly competitive, especially considering the additional color grading power, the sound with fair light, and the visual effects capabilities brought by Fusion. Of course, there are a few limitations you have to be aware of if you're thinking of switching. Um, the first one is that you'll be losing the Adobe Dynamic Link feature. Um, it's not something I personally use often, but it might be worth considering this. Next, in order to run Resolve properly, you will need a good GPU. Uh, now, it does seem that uh, MacBooks handle Resolve better than uh, PC laptops. On MacBooks, uh, you can add an external GPU using Thunderbolt 3, I think it's called eGPU. Personally, I was editing on an XPS 15 laptop for quite some time and the graphic card was struggling with 4K content and an external 4K display. So I had to move to a physical workstation with a dedicated GPU and from there things were much better. I would recommend you get a GeForce 1080 Ti. Um, the price is dropping and the performance is very close to the newer RTX uh, 2080 Ti model. Another minor limitation is that when you're creating some text and you want to add a shape or a simple line, um, well, this is much easier done in Premiere and maybe that's because Adobe is more like a publishing software uh, company. Uh, but in Resolve, uh, you would have to go through Fusion or mess around. It's not as straightforward as Premiere for now. So maybe they'll correct this in a future update. Last thing to know is that even though more and more people are using Resolve, while most editors are still using Final Cut or Premiere or Avid. Uh, so if you want to do some collaborative work, you might have to go through XML exports. So this is something to consider. Overall, I don't have the feeling of having lost or sacrificed something from switching. Besides, the Resolve team is moving, improving and updating very, very fast, much faster than Adobe. 
Unresolve has a very active growing community, so it's a pretty confident bet on the future. Now, I must warn you, if you've used Premiere for years like me, you have developed habits and muscle memory over time, so switching does take time. I do not regret it at all, and in fact, um, I find it pretty hard to go back to Premiere now, because there are so many things that are better designed in Resolve. At the end of the day, the big choice is up to you. My aim here wasn't to tell you to switch, especially if you don't need to, but to share my honest thoughts in case you're thinking of it. So what about you? Do you want to switch or not? Is there something that pulls you back? I'd be glad to know, so um, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.